Hello and welcome everybody. Today we will be wrapping up our PowerPoint on plate tectonics by looking at the different types of interactions between the continental and oceanic plates. So without further ado, let me bring up the old PowerPoint and explain to you exactly what we are going to be doing today. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we are gonna go from slide 16, talking about the different types of plates all the way down to the very end. So excited to start this with you guys today. So let's dive on in. So plate boundaries. There are three different plate types of plate boundaries that I wanna, that you should concern yourself with. We have divergent, convergent, and transform plate boundaries. Divergent means the plates are moving apart. Convergent means they are coming together and transform means they are slip sliding past one another. Okay, three different types. Now, a divergent plate boundary is uh, pretty simple. There's only one subcategory. It occurs when two plates, they could be oceanic, uh, they could be continental crust, they could be a mix of the two, meaning a continental and an oceanic, or two oceanics or two continentals. It occurs when they move away from one another. Okay, they are moving away, they are opening up, a crack is forming, it's opening up in the earth, and that is what a divergent plate boundary looks like. This plate boundary forms a rift valley near the sea floor, meaning that as it opens up, it has these two peaks that form. Okay, so these two peaks form on either side, and you get a valley in the center. So you can see right here, we have this, this rift valley. We have the two peaks and the valley in the center. An example would be the mid-oceanic ridge or the mid-Atlantic ridge. And if you look, here is North America, South America, Africa. This is the Atlantic Ocean right here. Looking through there, you see this red uh, giant seam. That is the mid-Atlantic ridge, the mid-oceanic ridge. And that is due to the divergent plate boundaries moving apart. On either side, they are going in opposite directions. Okay, so a divergent plate boundary, they move apart. Here you can see, this is a wonderful example of a valley occurring here. We see that as the two plates move apart, you create a rift valley. A hot magma moves up, creates new land. There's that rift valley right there. This is showing how you actually get a sea that forms. Originally, when we had Pangaea and everything was close, all the continents were close together, they opened up. As they opened up throughout the millions of years, you get the formation of a sea. The next type of boundary is a convergent plate boundary. So we had a divergent where they are moving apart. Now we have a convergent where they are coming together. Of this convergent plate boundary, there are three different subcategories, okay? The first type would be when two oceanic plates collide. Remember, we have oceanic plates and we have continental plates, oceanic crust and continental crust. In this case, it's when two oceanic plates come, uh, collide. Now, oceanic plates are thinner but more dense than continental plates. So when two oceanic plates collide, one plate will sink below the other. It forms what's called a subduction zone. An example of this would be Japan and the Aleutian Islands. We see that as it slip slides underneath the other one, one gets pushed up here, and that's where you get volcano and your islands, the Aleutian Islands, and a trench is completed. Because think about this, as they're coming together, you start to get one sliding under, right there in that area, right here, this area, you get a trench that forms, okay? So a trench is completed with the formation of an island chain. The second type is when you have an ocean plate and a continental plate colliding. So now you have a thin ocean plate and a very large continental plate, right? This huge, this very big continental plate, and they're gonna combine here. What do you think would happen? You're correct in assuming that the thinner plate would slide underneath the thicker plate. The ocean plate would slide underneath the continental plate. The ocean plate is more dense, so it goes under the continental plate. It forms a range of volcanic mountains on the continental crust, and you also get a trench where the two meet. Okay? Examples of this would be the Ring of Fire, the Andes Mountains, the Cascade Mountains. 
Here's a little diagram. You can see the trench is also formed right here. You can see the formation of these mountains. Uh, this is due because the crust is coming down, it's being reheated and then rising to the surface again. This here is the ring of fire. This is formed by the convergence of the oceanic plate onto the continental plates. Again, here we go. The Andes Mountains are formed from the South American plate moving this way and the uh, continental plate moving towards it. Again, they're combining. You get the formation of these mountain ranges along the entire coast of South America, along Chile, and you get the formation of a trench here. The third type is when two continental plates collide. So we had two oceanics, we had an oceanic and a continental, and now we have two continentals. Here you get pretty much the same idea. You get a mountain range that forms um, with little to no trench, okay? Himalayan mountains would be an example of this. So we've talked about convergent plate boundaries. We've talked about divergent plate boundaries. Now what we will talk about is the transform plate boundary. Transform plate boundary is where they slip slide past one another. You would know this as the San Andreas Fault, right? What occurs at San Andreas Fault? Watch. You're right, earthquakes. Earthquakes are major, major indicators of transform plate boundaries. One plate will move north, one plate will move south. They are slip sliding past one another, okay? As they slip slide past, there is so much friction, okay, that as they break apart, it's releasing this friction, this vibration, this cracking of rock, this fracturing, and that is what creates your earthquakes. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can see here, these two mountain ranges used to line up together, but we have one plate moving south, one plate moving north, and they are creating a transform plate boundary. The San Andreas Fault, we can see the majority of California is moving down while Southern California and Western California is moving up. It's not that it's going to fall into the ocean, it is just relocating and moving up. And we see along this boundary, there is a large fracture zone, and as it fractures with every slight move, it releases vibrations, and those vibrations are felt as earthquakes. We're almost there, guys, just three more slides. Now, hot spots are not a plate boundary. However, volcanoes are associated with plate boundaries, and these are caused by small melting areas within the mantle. Hot spots do not move, however, the plate moves above it. So if this were to be your hotspot, as you are moving over it, actually, let me show you guys with a piece of paper here, and I'm gonna take off screen share so it'll be easier to see. This is our plate. It's a movable plate, that's a piece of paper, but that's our plate. And here we have our hotspot. So the hotspot will say it's still right in the center of the screen, but as the plate moves over, right? As that plate moves over, you can see, the hotspot originally will start here. But then as the plate moves over, the hotspot will start and poke through there. And then as it moves over again, it'll poke through there. As the plate continues to move, it will poke through again. This is really would be better in person. But you can see what you actually get is the movement of this hotspot from here to there, to there, to there, and so on. So, the plate moves, but what you get is the hot spot. This, because magma keeps coming up every single time, you get the formation of islands. Okay, so you get one island here, you get one island here, one island here, and one island here. And you would actually get the movement of this plate right on, uh, actually, I'm sorry, indicated by the island formation. Okay. So, pretty neat. Let me get you back to showing you the PowerPoint here. Uh, the Hawaiian island chain was caused by this. Okay, so we could see the hotspot movement that as the plate moves, the hotspot stays in the same spot. We see we get the deposits of this volcanic eruption, and that shows up as islands. So, uh, hopefully, 
hopefully you can see that it's the movement of this play right here because here are the Hawaiian Islands right here and they're moving backwards. So hopefully this has answered all of your questions with regard to plate tectonics, the movement of plates, the different interactions between plates, hot spots, uh, et cetera. So we are looking to do a little review, take a little quiz coming up in the near future. Please, if you guys have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me. Um, and I hope you all are having a wonderful day. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.